Okay, so we have our beautiful figure over here that we call transistor, and we love it so much that we're actually going to take a heart just to make it a bit bigger and put the heart around our beautiful little circuit over here, and then we're going to save it. So remember, um, we have the name over here, transistor. We're going to copy that name. We're going to go save as, and we're going to turn this into PDF. Options, current slide. Okay. Um, make it transistor. It's going to ask me to overwrite it. It does overwrite. It opens it in my PDF viewer. And I see I have my beautiful figure, but look, it's a, the size of a whole like A4 piece of paper or something like that. It's pretty big. Okay. And now I want to actually use this figure inside um, my LaTeX article. So I go over to um, Overleaf, which is my uh, my preferred LaTeX editor. I really love Overleaf. And Overleaf really nicely, I have this uh, little um, article set up and I compile it. And what I get is just um, some IEEE TRAN article and it says that I should put my figure over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go begin figure um, and it makes me a nice little template of a figure over here. And to include graphics inside my project, I have a folder called figures, which is uh, my graphics path. And it has a figure called figure1.pdf, which happened to be there before. And I compile it. And as you can see, I get my figure over here. So um, just first of all, with if you have Overleaf Professional, it's really nice that you can hit menu over here. And you can go to Dropbox or Git or GitHub. Um, I'll do the job, but I uh, prefer using Dropbox. And I click on Dropbox, and it says it's syncing it. And it says that uh, my, drop my project will appear in the Dropbox folder called Apps overleaf latex tutorial okay and um, so i'll go over into my windows explorer over here and i have uh, apps overleaf latex tutorial inside my dropbox folder and you see that everything's there that that is there appears here including my figure.tech which is what i'm working on um, and inside this figures i have figure one so what's really nice that I can do, I can take um, the uh, PDF that I uh, had before, which was called the transistor, and I can just stick it inside this folder. And um, if I wait a few seconds, I will actually um, get the transistor inside here. So let's instead of having figures figure one, I will, as you see, the transistor automatically appeared here. So I just save it to my Dropbox folder and voila, I get um, the figure that I want. And Overleaf even finds it and puts it in. And when I recompile now, you will see what happens is I get a mess because that was an A4 piece of paper. So, of course, what I should do now is I should do something like uh, width equals slash column width. And when I recompile that, then it will go down to size. But you see that I have a lot of white space around here and I have the word transistor that I wrote inside uh, my um, inside my, uh, my my PowerPoint. Right. And I don't want it to say transistor over here. Um, so um, what I need to do basically is I need to take that uh, PDF that I have over here, which is a full PDF of a full paper, and I need to crop it. But if you look into different free um, PDF editors, they usually do not come with a uh, cropping tool. You can go and purchase something like Adobe Acrobat Writer, and you are able to crop it. But um, that actually means that every time I make a little update, I'm going to go and have to crop my uh, file. And therefore, I'm going to use a another method that I can crop uh, directly inside my LaTeX file. So I prepared a little bit of uh, text over here um, for using that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this trim and clip command inside the include graphics. This is all part of the um, graphics X, graphic X um, uh, package. So I wrote width equals column width, then I'm going to put a comma and write trim equals something clip. And what the something is, is basically um, how much I want to clip off of the four sides of my picture, starting with the left side, then the bottom side, then the right side, then the top side. So for example, if I would go and do one centimeter on each side, um, what, you'll see that it will crop my picture and uh, get part of it off. So you can't really see, I guess, uh, but let's say I was going to take 10 off of the left side, then you'll see that it should crop a lot of it. Okay, um, so what I uh, think you should do then is go and play around with this. Okay, 10 was too much. Let's go down to 8 and keep on recropping this until we get to the right size so we have exactly no white space around. 
Well, I have a better way of doing it. So let's go back to our old handy PowerPoint. And what I'm going to actually do is all of my figures, I'm going to start by um, taking everything and putting it at the top left. And the reason I do that is just for convenience. I don't really need to, but that way I know I don't really need to crop off anything from the uh, from the top left, and, uh, the, the, the left and the top sides. Then what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take a box and I'm going to put a bounding box around it. Now this bounding box is just to show me that I really cropped off all the margins I want to crop off. I left a little bit of it. I'm going to actually make this even uh, uh, some sort of a perforated line and I'm going to make it red. I do not want to see this in my, uh, in my final PDF that comes out in LaTeX. But this kind of shows me the sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a nice little arrow over here and I'm going to Pull this arrow all the way to the side. Now, uh, again, uh, the arrow is just uh, for me. I don't really need an arrow. I'm going to put a begin arrow. I could have just used any line. Um, and I'm going to make this arrow also nice and red and uh, nice and uh, perforated like that. And the reason I did this is now I can take this, go over here, and look what the size is. And the size comes out 21.92 centimeters. I need a bit more than that. So I'm going to write over here 22 centimeters. And um, that is just a, a note to myself how much I need to crop off of this picture. So I need to crop off 22 centimeters on the side over here. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom now. So um, what I can do is I can make this a lot shorter and then I can uh, rotate it. Okay, and put it down here below and have it touch there and touch there. I used shift it. Let me really change it uh, nicely. I can duplicate this as well. I don't like to keep on redoing things. Okay, I turned it around, stuck it over there. And let's see what size is this. This is 6.8 centimeters, so let's say about 7 centimeters. Okay, and now I'm going to, again, save my design. So um, I'm going to do a, save it as a PDF. Um, options, current slide, okay, and the name is transistor, which I forgot to copy over here. Um, and actually, I don't want to save it over there. I want to save it inside my overleaf uh, under figures, okay, and overwrite the transistor that's over there. Um, yes, so I'm going to write it. So this is what I got out, what I had on my slide, okay? And now if I go back to my overleaf and I recompile, I see I get something really nasty. That is not what I wanted. What do I want? I want to trim basically nothing or a little teeny bit, maybe 0.2 centimeters off of the left side. From the bottom, I already know, I saw in my PowerPoint, I want to clip, uh, clip off um, 7 centimeters from the bottom, 22 centimeters from the right side, and again, something like 0.2 centimeters from the top, where, as you can see, I just left a little bit uh, just so I know that I cropped it well and I don't have extra white space, and I'm going to recompile. And voila, I got my perfect picture. I don't have any red over there. I don't have any additional white space or anything. Okay, so that's my perfect um, PDF that I saved and I cropped and everything. If I would have cropped it a bit less, like let's say 6.5 centimeters on the bottom, I would have seen that red line. But since I measured it already and I knew it was just about 7 centimeters, I didn't have to play around with it and do it many iterations. I just immediately got the right size of a crop. And now look how beautiful this is. I go back to my PowerPoint and I want to now add a whole bunch of different stuff to my, uh, uh, to my drawing over here. I don't know. I want to draw all kinds of stuff inside. I want to add some sort of, uh, you know, text inside. I want to say, cool. Um, and now I want to make an update to my picture. I again, go save as PDF. Okay. Um, and again, I have to go back to where I was before. I don't know why it didn't save that. Usually it's at the right place, but, uh, uh, and I want to overwrite transistor with current slide. Okay, save. Yes, it will save it. I will wait a few seconds till it uploads to my overleaf. Unfortunately, you do need a professional overleaf account, um, which is a great thing to have in any case. And then I recompile and you will see that I will get my updated picture in a second. And you see it says cool over here and has my little um, circle and my triangle. Just uh, another point of methodology. So remember that my file is called transistor.pdf. Inside my, uh, my PowerPoint, we have the word transistor. So we know that this specific slide is called transistor.pdf. And there's one last thing that I want to call the label transistor. Okay, so um, 
So I call the label transistor, and then uh, I also know that when I want to um, see what kind of references I have, like say, uh, let's put a figure inside our paper. This is, uh, and I use, uh, uh, this is fig dot um, slash ref, and it's going to be called uh, fig, uh, fig uh, transistor, right? Then when I compile this, and it says in my paper that this is figure one and I want to look for what figure one is and I see in the text it's fig transistor now I don't have to go and figure out what the uh, name is that's pointing to the PDF I know that this is going to be called inside my uh, my Explorer over here it's going to be called transistor so that really saves me a lot of headaches uh, a lot of my students um, use all kinds of strange names here or call it figure one and now I have a hundred figure ones from different papers or um, you know they have one thing inside here and another thing inside here and it's very cryptic and uh, so forth if you keep this methodology it is real nice so um, the way to actually reuse all of this stuff I showed you is to make a template so I have a template um, I can even link it for you guys in uh, on my website and this website this template is just a kind of picture that I do change it often but it has everything I need it has a bounding box and it has these little arrows that tell me how many centimeters it has the name of uh, of my uh, figure over here and it has the example of how to trim things because I never remember this command and so forth and so I can just keep on duplicating this and make all of my figures and start from this point um, these shapes are just examples of how my default shape is and what the you know default uh, margins are and uh, the default font and so forth the different things I showed you so I have a text box I have a line I have a uh, shape or two shapes and those I would want to get rid of before I start uh, drawing my picture okay so this is kind of the template that I use and I can uh, again share it with you guys and you start from here and all those defaults that we set up they will already be like that um, so that's what I wanted to show you about making figures and uh, we'll continue uh, with a bit more about LaTeX at some point and how to make uh, figures from different uh, Microsoft tools such as Excel or how to get them out of how to get nice graphs out of Python and MATLAB, etc.